Recently it occurred to me that it's been too long since I have read anything by Richard Hooker, so I decided before I went back and reread his Laws of Ecclesiastical Polity to see if I could find a good biography. And this caught my eye. It's by Bradford Littlejohn, Richard Hooker, a companion to his life and work. Um, I'm really glad I purchased this edition. It's, uh, it's very well written. The author has a clear and easy to read style. There were only a few places where I had to go back and reread it. And when you consider, if you've ever read the Laws of Ecclesiastical Polity, you know how difficult a work that is to read. So I thought that was very helpful that he's so easy to understand himself. There's the ISBN, a little bit about the author. He's a young fellow, he looks like from his picture. The volume itself, uh, this apparently is a statue, statue of Richard Hooker himself. The volume is eight inches tall only five inches wide, something like nine sixteenths of an inch thick. I plan after, uh, afterwards, the next book I plan to read is this, The Laws of Ecclesiastical Polity. I just finished this yesterday. This is uh, something of an abridgment, and it is uh, The Laws in Modern English. So I have a copy of the old Keeble edition of uh, the volumes of The Laws. And I think I'll read this in conjunction with that. What I want to do here today is just show you a few snippets from this book. Um, let me first tell you the font is around ten and a half points tall. It's very easy to read. This is a normal glued paperback. It does not lie open. It's been broken in, but of course you have to use two hands or a book stand to read it. On the left, you see the copyright page. It's a copyright, Bradford Little John. It's from Cascade Books. It is the ISBN, manufactured in the USA. On the right, we see the contents, and we have 12 chapters. Three chapters about Richard Hooker, the myth, the man, and the book. And Hooker as a Protestant, as a polemicist, as a philosopher as a pastor, and then several chapters, four chapters on key themes, scripture, law, church, liturgy, and sacraments. Those of you who've uh, subscribed to my channel for some time and have uh, participated in some of the polls will recognize that these are also areas that are of interest to me and are often the subject of poll questions. So who was he? Um, he was born in 1553 or 1554. Hooker went to school at Corpus Christi College at Oxford under the sponsorship of Jewell, John Jewell, whose name should be fairly familiar to many of you. During Elizabeth's reign, there was controversy over whether the English church has been rightly reformed sufficiently according to the prescript of God's word. In 1585, Hooker became master of the temple, the temple church, which was the parish of lawyers and law students. And uh, there he got involved in a controversy. The controversy was with Walter Travers, who was one of Hooker's subordinates there at that church. Travers was uh, a proponent of the Presbyterian form of church government. And a particular controversy mentioned on this page had to do with Hooker's view that uh, the Catholic faithful, although they may be confused doctrinally, are not necessarily damned. Afterwards, Hooker moved to a small rural church and conceived the idea for a book to systematically defend the worship and structure of the English church against her detractors, which is the origin of the laws of ecclesiastical polity. In Book 3 of the Laws, he counters the contention that Scripture contains a necessary form of church polity that cannot be altered. And in Book 4, he counters the contention that the Church of England's rites are unedifying and too prone to popish superstition. In Book 5, Hooker justifies the substantial continuities with medieval liturgy and structure that remain in the Church of England after the Reformation. 
Little John's chapter on Hooker is Protestant contains some interesting comments. Uh, I'd like to show you a few of them. On the point of scripture, some in Hooker's day and ours have imagined that to honor scripture rightly, we must treat it as the sole authority in all areas of life. Hooker has no patience for this kind of biblicism. Little John says that Hooker's ideas may be best seen not as the anticipation of Arminius, this is on the question of whether he was actually reformed, but of a moderate form of Calvinism known as hypothetical universalism, which was uh, offered by delegates, English delegates at the Synod of Dort. It accepts the unconditionality of predestination, but does not grant predestination unto death. The author points out that some scholars say that Hooker did not hold to the visible-invisible church distinction. Uh, Little John opposes that interpretation, and he says that a profession of faith, in Hooker's view, is necessary to count one as a member of the visible church, and true faith in Jesus Christ is necessary to make one a member of the invisible church. After discussing Hooker's Eucharistic view in some detail, he, um, little John then has a section of the chapter on a Eucharistic ecumenism, in which he points out that Hooker takes for granted that all parties in his day are agreed in rejecting Zwingliism. And then he goes on to say, the Reformed then, the Lutheran, indeed the Catholics, are all agreed in affirming a real participation of Christ and of life in his body and blood by means of this sacrament. So wherefore should the world continue still distracted and rent with so many manifold conten contentions when there remaineth now no controversy saving only about the subject where Christ is? So with those snippets, those samples of the book, I hope I've shown you how clear the prose is and how interesting the concepts, the topics being discussed are. Um, I, uh, I definitely recommend this book. It's a very good and easy read. And I may, at some point in the near future, provide a short video on this uh, slight abridgment and modernization of the laws of ecclesiastical polity uh, which includes only the preface through book four. At some point in the future, I think they'll be publishing the remaining books in a similar format. So thank you very much for watching. Uh, remember to like the video if you do like it, share it with your friends, and you're always welcome to subscribe to the channel. Thank